432 Park Avenue cost $1.25 billion to build. Central Park Tower is costing $3 billion just to construct. The Burj Khalifa, when it was built, cost over $1.5 billion. These are some of the tallest skyscrapers on earth that cost billions and billions and billions of dollars to construct on spec. They are total bets. Why would anyone do this? Welcome to an all new video on more Ryan Surhan. Thank you so much for being here. We have a super serious setting for today. I've got lights here, lights here, lights over there, backlit behind me because we're talking about big things. Big towers, big dollars, billions. Now I sell some of the most expensive homes in the world and a lot of those homes that I sell for 40 million here, 50 million here, 100 million here, 250 million here are in the tallest skyscrapers on earth. And what's always been fascinating to the world is how someone can raise so much money to build one building on a bet. You're betting that you're gonna make money. You're betting that this is a good business decision. You're betting that you're gonna build it in the shortest period of time to hit the market at the right time so that people will come through and actually pay you the dollars that you wanna be paid so that this could be a successful project. And by the way, you've probably seen our property tours of the penthouse that we are currently selling for $250 million. In one of the singular trophy properties on planet Earth. So make sure to go watch that video too. So how do you actually build a skyscraper? Step one is you acquire the land. Now, before you can create your plans, file for construction permits, or do anything else, you need to buy the land that you want to build on. The value of prime lots for development along or near Billionaire's Row, which is 57th Street, east to west in Manhattan, tends to fetch around $1,500 per square foot of allowable buildable space. And that's just for the land and what you're allowed to build into the air. Remember, in New York City, what's valuable is how high you can go up. Oftentimes, you don't even have all of the rights to go up, right? which is called floor area ratio. So you're calculating what's my FAR, how high can I build, and you don't even have any designs, any plans, any permits yet. You've spent all this money, and you just have a 30,000 square foot plot of land. But wait, where did you get all the money from to buy the site? Are you just a liquid billionaire that can spend hundreds of millions to billions of dollars whenever you want it? If you are, please call me or email me, ryan at sirhant.com. I will totally help you. So before you can complete step one, there's one thing you need to know about being a real estate developer. Your biggest responsibility, aside from actually building your skyscraper, is to secure financing, which is a fancier way of saying that you need to raise money or get a loan, and you're going to need a lot of it before you file plans, before you pay real estate taxes, before you hire a general contractor to begin construction, every stage of this process, before you ever even do anything, is going to end up costing you millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. And one of the trickiest parts of this equation is that securing the financing for all of these things also costs money. You heard me correctly, more money, to get more money. How do you secure financing for a skyscraper? You have two options. One, you can take on debt. Two, you can give up equity. So if you take on debt, that means that every dollar you secure in financing is going to have to be paid back with interest. And this is where raising money ends up costing you even more money down the line. So let's say you get a $300 million loan on a five-year term, and they give you an 8% interest rate with a three-month grace period. That means that for the first three months after receiving the loan, you don't have to worry about making any payments to the bank to repay the loan. But after that three-month period, you're going to be sending a $6 million check to the bank every month for the next five years until you've paid back the full $300 million that you borrowed in addition to over $60 million dollars in interest. Now, the alternative to securing financing, so debt financing through loans and taking on debt, right, is to give up equity. This is much riskier for the investor because it basically means that they will only make money if the project is successfully completed 
and profitable. So this is why most big real estate developers secure a mix. They get a mix of financing options, some debt, and some equity deals to put the whole thing together to get enough cash on hand to build this massive skyscraper that you'll be able to see from space. And now it's time for step two which is buying the air rights. Most of the super tall skyscrapers that you see in New York City are taller than the local zoning laws allow for. But luckily for real estate developers like yourself maybe, there is a loophole in the system called air rights. Zoning laws will prevent you from building past a certain height. Right? Otherwise everyone would just buy a piece of land and they build up to you know 2,000 feet in the air and the building would fall over and the, the bedrock's not strong enough. Or... These zoning laws don't necessarily limit the building height directly, but instead they control the bulk, okay, the density of the building by what's called the floor area ratio. This means that real estate developers can build nine times the square feet of the lot area in a residential district. And depending on how the building bulk is arranged, this typically means that a building can be about 15 stories, some instances, or much, 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 much taller in others. But 15 stories is nowhere near the 50 plus story skyscraper that you wanna build, right? So this is where air rights come into play. As a real estate developer, you can approach the owners of the lots adjacent to the one that you just bought. And if those lots are less dense than the law allows for, meaning that they could have technically built a taller building there, but they didn't use all of their available space. The owners of these lots have additional FAR available and they can sell those air rights to you, which is effectively their unused floor area that they could have built into the sky that you can take to stick on top of your skyscraper. Caveat, every building, every site, every location is different. If you're building in a historical district, I don't care what your FAR is and how many air rights you have, you have to go through landmarks. The landmarks committee is gonna look at what photos of that block looked like 200 years ago. And if you're trying to change what it looked like, it's a great chance that they're gonna say, good luck, but nope, we're not letting you build it. But for the most part, landmarks councils are pretty good. Otherwise you'd be walking around Soho and they'd be like, this huge orange building all of a sudden. And then you turn around and there'd be like a bubble gum tower and it would just be weird. You wouldn't feel like you're even in New York anymore. And New York is what pays for everything, the city, the character, the structure. Taking all this into account, this is how we end up with super tall skyscrapers. Developers buy all of the unused building space from the buildings around them so that they can build even and air rights generally cost about, let's say, half the price of land per square foot. So congratulations. You spent hundreds of millions of dollars and all you have to show for it is a plot of land and pieces of paper that say you own the air above that land. But on the bright side, now you can finally move on to step three, which is designing and planning your skyscraper. These are your soft costs, right? You're going to want to hire an architect to design your building. You're going to consult with engineers. You're going to secure more financing and start paying interest probably. I right? pay your real estate taxes and a whole lot more. Pay people like me, I cost money. In other words, you're paying a series of expenses that aren't directly related to the construction of your skyscraper, but are still necessary nonetheless. Step four, building the actual skyscraper. This is the final piece of the puzzle. You have to sell it, obviously, you have to sell all the units, you have to rent them, find retail tenants, anchor tenants, there's office space, you gotta hire all the staff to manage this whole building and all that, but you're not gonna do any of that stuff if you haven't built the damn building. So this is the final piece of that puzzle, and it's time for you to hire a big time general contractor. Because these are the guys that help bring your dreams to life, it's gonna be really, really expensive. Like, really expensive. Hiring a major general contractor is gonna cost you around 800 to $900 million in the situation that we're talking about right now. It could cost you less, it could also cost you a lot more. And that's it. After you wait a few years for construction to finish, I mean, that's a whole separate video that we could do. You've officially built your skyscraper and it only cost you a little under two billion. Two Bs, two bucks. But you didn't build a skyscraper just to build a skyscraper, right? You built this thing 
to make money. How much can you expect to make from selling the apartments in your fancy new building? Well, this is where things get a little interesting and it's helpful to look at what units in other skyscrapers have been able to sell for. Xtel's development 157 reportedly cost about $1.5 billion to construct and the total projected revenue was $2 billion. In other words, they were looking at a profit of $500 million or about 33% on the total cost of the project. So now $500 million may sound a little insignificant compared to $1.5 billion, but there's one important thing to keep in mind. Xtel, being the developer of 157, didn't have to put up anywhere near $1.5 billion themselves. Instead, they raised the vast majority of that money in debt and equity, and then after paying back their debts and sharing profits with investors, they kept the rest anywhere from as much as 10% to as much as 50% of the $500 million. So there you have it. Now you know exactly how to become New York City's next big luxury real estate developer, how to build a skyscraper, and how much you can plan to make or lose from it. So thank you so much for watching another more Ryan Sirhan video. I'll see you on the next one. If you like stuff like this, kind of educational stuff about real estate, anything, please leave notes in the comments. If you don't like this stuff and you just want to see me run around and work out and jump in and out of my car and do all that fun stuff, tell me in the comments too. Send this to your mom, all your friends. Like it, subscribe it. I'll see you on the next one.